So the second tool we want to quickly look at is Toro Scholar. So if you're looking to create an account with Toro Scholar, you want to go to torosscholar.toro.edu and over here on the right hand side, click on my account and it'll ask you for your email and password if you already have an account and you want to make sure you would tell them you're not a robot. If you don't have an account at this stage, you want to click on sign up and it'll ask you for your email. Make sure you use your at tu.edu email address. Punch in your first name and last name and then create a password. You can see the password must be at least eight characters long, must have both an upper and a lowercase letter. It must have a number and it must have a special character. And then click on you're not a robot and then click on create account. In my case, because I've already created an account, I will go in and add that in there. So once I've logged in, you'll note that there's a couple of things that you have the ability to do. The first is that you can go in and edit your profile, in which place you can change your password. You can add in a middle initial because it didn't give you that option before and a suffix if you have one. And then you can add in an institutional affiliation and you should make sure that you put in uh, university or Toro University California in there. Beyond that, under the My Account option, you'll notice that you can create research alerts. And these essentially allow you to create saved searches so that if there are specific things that you want to find in Toro Scholar or that you want to be alerted show up in Toro Scholar, you can create an alert for those things. So I can create an alert for K-12 online learning. So I can search for that and you see it finds 125 things and one of my options is I can save this search so that way it will be always be there for me as I'm looking for these things so it would show up under my saved searches here. The other thing is you can have it set up so that um, it will send you a copy of a message if you were to message someone from here and it will also send you monthly reports about the number of people that are uh, accessing your materials here and all you've got to do is click those two buttons and click update to allow that to happen. Uh, the follow management is not set up yet so you can see here now that it's not set up uh, within our system yet so we won't worry about that and then it'll allow you to access the author dashboard and that is where you will see that you get all of the um, analytics in terms of who's accessing your work, where they're coming from, the type of institutions they're coming from, uh, the different countries, uh, even just the websites that they're finding your information from. So you can see that you can get a, a robust amount of information uh, here. You can see how many times your work has been downloaded by day and you can set that up by month. Um, same thing with the meta page data that you've got here as well as it'll give you your downloads for your different um, items that you've posted here so you can see like this third one here has been downloaded 131 times so you can get a fair amount of, of data in your author dashboard as you can see here now the one thing you'll note is that it has assigned me to this particular one and you can see I don't have the ability to change any of that information It just automatically assigns me to the College of Education and Health Sciences when I click on that link it actually shows all of the different articles that have been published by faculty that have been connected to this particular account so the other thing that you don't see here is you don't see a way to actually post a material and that's because Toro Scholar right now hasn't sent that up yet. There is a submit research button here and if you were to click on it, it takes you through the entire TCUS system and down here near the bottom you'll see that um, we have the CEHS set up here 
And as of yet, they haven't set up links for each of the four programs, but by the looks of it, that's something that they are planning to do at some point in the future. Um, but when I click on that link, it just takes me to essentially a message. So I can send a message article submission, and I could type in the information here and click send. And where this will actually go is it actually gets sent to an individual by the name of Timothy Valent, um, who, as you can see from this message that we got from Dr. Kadish back in January, and this is an annual message that he sends out every year looking for submissions to the faculty publications book. Um, he, Timothy, is the scholarly communications librarian, so you can actually just email the information directly to him at that particular address, or the other option that you have is you can submit it through this um, article submission option that we had, this submit research option that we had right here. Now before you can do any of that, you actually have to um, go in and access the author agreement PDF, complete this, and then send it back to Timothy before they can start posting your work. So if you've never done that, you want to do that first before they can post any of your work to the Toro Scholar website. So that's a quick way to uh, access Toro Scholar and set your account up and then how to start submitting information to it.